So, you had a question for me, and it was, have I ever heard of the Stanford experiment? Yes. What I'm is surprised it? since, well, you haven't taken psychology. No, I want, I want to. That'd actually be really interesting. Psychology is very interesting. So, I, I was saying psychology. Yeah. Um, and I'm taking it from through it, and I had to learn about the Stanford experiment. The Stanford experiment, now the whole psychology class is very intriguing, but the Stanford experiment in particular piqued my interest because it involved the question is whether or not humans in a, uh, in a particular environment or is pushed into a social world, can they, and given power, can they abuse that power? And or can that turn them evil? The Stanford. So, let me explain the Stanford experiment. I'm Stanford trying to clarify. Experiment took 24 guards, 24 people in total, students, so regular people. Yeah. Um, and they split them up. I believe randomized them. You could either be a guard or a prisoner, and they reenact a whole prison. Okay. To uh, apply that. I see. Um. So the question, what prompted this was, how will somebody react if they have power over another person in a, in a controlled environment? No, how, two things. Could a person be pushed to become evil or abuse power? And two, I believe, this is my understanding of the whole experiment. And two, could they be pressured because of the social role? Or because they're in my room. Like, for example, the guards were given sunglasses. Uh, their identity was and remained hidden. The prisoners, on the other hand, were dehumanized. So they were given numbers. They were given... Yeah, it was... They did everything to dehumanize the prisoners to the point where the prisoners... Weren't human. Yeah, they, the guards wouldn't see the prisoners as humans. I see. So it would so be what, easier so what, what, to abuse the power of a guard. So, what, what, what were the findings? A lot of guards uh, abuse their power, I believe. From my understanding, a lot of guards abuse their power in the Stanford experiment. Question. Um, was there any spoken, like, pre-stated beliefs, religious beliefs for any of these people, or was it just random... It was People. random. It should have been random. It was okay. random Stanford students, I believe. From Stanford University. Okay. Yeah, or random jokes. Um, what well, intrigued me the most, because now you brought it up, there weren't any stand up beliefs beforehand. Well, there were multiple beliefs. There was, allegedly... I say this allegedly because a lot of people deny it. Even the guy who made it sell deny it. Um, that the guards were given a pretense... To be tough or mean, and they were scorched or uh, told that they, they, they should be more mean or more tough, which would cause the experiment to go to be biased. Yeah, to be biased. Okay. Um. What? When was this done? 1971. 71. Okay. So, Interesting. Well, that experiment really got my gears thinking. Can humans? Cause that 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 really brings up our psychology and stuff. Like they were thrown in an environment, and if if it's true, they were changed because of that environment. So, for example, can humans change because of their environment? Yes, one hundred percent. Can their morals change? Yes, but can their beliefs change? Yes, yes. It, I mean, it's pretty simple. So. Anybody in a, if in a given environment, if they have a certain set of beliefs, core core values, uh, religion, whatever, if they if they are changed and leave that environment, that certain uh, let's say monotony of a, a routine or a day to day thing that they've gotten used to, if they go out of their comfort zone, so to speak, something will change, or they will keep believing what they believe, but they 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 can change yes for instance um there could be a buddhist who wants to find buddha and he goes on a a journey and he's 
searching deeper, and then he comes to know Jesus Christ, and he's saved. He's changed his beliefs, his his values, etc. But and is he's it now because changed... of his environment, or is it because it's because he chose to change his environment and speak to other people? You know what I mean? But that, and search. What you're, for... what you're saying is. He chose to find his environment. What I'm saying is... If he's just can, thrust upon a new yeah, environment. Could you, okay. Let's just, for example, you move to China. Or you move to a foreign country. Not China. <laughs> and you live there for 20 years. Does that change your belief? Does that change... With no pre... You're basically born into there. Would you change... Would you grow up believing what you believe? Like in China. If I was in, born in China, would I grow up being a Christian? Yes. And having my well, no, because well, do would I have the same parents? No. Well, then no. Yes. Oh, actually, I I can't. Uh, in my See, mind, I'm like, adopted. Okay, so like it's okay. I'm no, like what, I don't have the. Same. What I'm saying is, as long as you have the same, if you strongly believe something, no matter what situation you are put in, you probably won't change that belief. Unless you you realize you're in error, so for that for that being said, I don't think I would change. But I'd have to be growing up in a Christian household. So you have to be to grown up in a Christian environment. Correct. If I was not in a Christian environment, and if nobody ever witnessed to me, I would probably be a gangster. Like, <laughs> for season you know seven, I mean? man. Um, so you know, I mean, whatever situation you're in, you. In most cases, that person will be okay with that situation, unless it's like a terrible situation. So with morals, they will be the comfortable. Same thing, correct. Uh, I'm not making an ultimatum, but yes, like unless you, unless God is calling you, you won't feel a yearning to search deeper. I sound like, like you know what I mean? Sound like one of those. <laughs> ten, or, yeah. Okay. Flipping the the conversation. Uh, going back to because you grow up in an environment, because the standpoint experiment was based on could somebody be pushed to either abuse their power or become evil? That's essentially what was it. Do you think I'm trying to word this in a way that could happen in real life? Definitely, and it has happened in, in prisoner of war camps, the guards have abused their power. Um, for instance, to a normal Joe. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's lots of like, for instance, most the average soldier in a war, he just wants to be at home with his wife and kids working his job. He's just fighting to defend his country. Now, that's that's the old, old, old view of war. But the, here's the thing. That of war, yeah. Get all those power ups. And get, you know. that, that's video games. Anyway. Shoot. Um, let's see. So I, I think it right still can happen, though. yes. If Now, if a Christian is a, let's say a Christian is the warden for a, a, a county jail, will he abuse his power? A, no, he won't because he's a Christian. He B, his power... Doesn't necessarily hold mean it will happen. A, he won't because he's a Christian and he has good values. Or B, after a while, or, or immediately... He's going to feel his power and he's going to get prideful in what he, his, his domain, so to speak, over other humans that are dehumanized that he does not view as humans. So, yes, it does happen. And I think it could happen to a regular Joe, yeah. So, going more into deep, do you think, do you think that's evil? Using <laughs> going, I'm just trying to clarify. Do you think that's evil? Do, do I think, think that, that using your power over other humans? Is evil? Yes, obviously. It depends yeah. on how you use your power. Now, if he's a Christian and he's a, he's a warden, he he's keeps these people locked up. If he's keeping if he's keeping murderers locked up, he is not abusing his power and it is not evil. Now, if he doesn't feed them well, if he beats them for no reason, he's abusing his power and that is evil because that is not Christ-like. Okay, here's the question now. Is evil within that person natural? Did it come natural? Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. Suppress 
was he grown up back to the Stanford experiment, which it was basically, can you push people to become evil? Or were they born with a sense of evil and that evil just heightened and grown because of their environment? That is very, so like, very for example, good. Wow. Okay. If so you are, hold up. No, I get exactly what you're saying. Are we not. born sinful? Yes or no, basically. Does, are we do, born? Is no. everybody compelled to be evil? And will that evil blossom in a certain environment? Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say. Well, you can't say sin necessarily because sin is, we all have sin. Yes. So therefore, hold up. We yeah, all are oh. evil. So here we go. I'm going to go straight from the Bible on this. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I think because of Adam and Eve, the fall, all men are born sinful. Now, that doesn't mean a little, a little one-year-old toddler is is evil if that toddler dies in a car wreck chances so are think evil and whoa, sin are two separate hold things up, hold up hold up i'm just creating clarification okay now this this same child at age five even though it, this child has never been in a gang knows how to steal and how to lie to his parents yes nobody taught him that he learned that from where he is inherently evil but that doesn't mean that as a one-year-old who hasn't stolen or whatever, well, there, there's would... a certain line in age where you become sinful, but you don't have to be taught how to sin or how to be evil. I will... Now, we know that evil is the same as sin because evil is going against God's will or doing what is incorrect or what set, sets you away from God, creates distance, etc. Like Satan is the great evildoer. He's also a sinner. I will argue one point against that. We grow up looking. We 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 look young, to others. Yes. When you're young, you're growing up. You learn from others. You look at others. You look. Our brains are developing when you're young. Now, as it's a path to where we learn from others. That has to go with environmental. Your environment. Yeah. So yes, I believe we. I believe with you. We're inherently sinful but I believe we are born with sin but as you grow up I believe we learn to some extent how to steal how to lie from our parents from the people surrounding us okay I, I agree that, yes that, to that, a certain degree techniques. but what if what if you're growing up with monks who never steal who never lie Yes, they still sin, but it's not as a parent or maybe they run out of the room when they want to cuss or something. So the child never hears that. That child's still going to you know, hide food under the table that they don't want to eat. They're still going to lie about brushing their I teeth or not. I would argue against that. Hey, you want to test that theory? <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> we, we need to go adopt a little child. <laughs> I believe. I, I don't know. I just... I believe, yes, you can sin, and yes, you there is sin. We're all full of sort of glory God. I just believe if you took, for example, if you Here, took you two kids. Do you have your kids, phone so I can pull up the Bible? If you took two kids. Now, I'm not going in. I'm just saying. No, I got you. If you. Look, for example, you take two kids. Two kids. And you put them one environment where they're not in a church Christian environment. Okay. Where they don't encounter, like you, they don't encounter the world. any worldly aspect. <laughs> Not any. Not any. Small amounts. And then you stick a Christian, no, a person, another Regular boy, Joe. Yeah, another Joe, and you put them in the Mexican cartel. Oh. <laughs> I bet you, yes, this one can lie and steal. But the other one's going to be more sinful, yes. Yes. But here's the thing. It's both sin. Yes, it's both and sin. And any sin is a still a sin. There's no, 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 no okay. there's no sin greater than another sin. That that's what well, I'm just saying. Except it. killing. No. Well, there are some sins that have greater consequences. Indeed, but they're all separated. From but God. they're all sins. For instance, the only sin we are to flee from is sexual sin, and Paul says to flee from that. It, it literally means run away. Now, now stealing, he doesn't say run away. He says find something useful to do with your hands, so you may um, be dependent upon no man. They're, those are different degrees, but it's still sin. So I, I would say both of those people are evildoers. Now, one of them may have salvation if he grows up in a Christian household. He, yes, he still sins, but hopefully he's repenting and learning okay, from his I mistakes. Agree with that. 
Oh, good. <laughs> now, the guy in the cartel, he, 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 just as like the other Christian child, they're both inherently sinful, but this one's in an environment where sin is encouraged and uplifted and like that's that's the normal and that's the good thing and it's encouraged so therefore he's going to be more sinful in the, his environment so we are identify that sin and evil are the same thing correct yes so my question is where did evil come from I see what you're doing here. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> you, oh, you, wow. You, wow. You, you combine the two. Okay. Yeah, at the beginning, there was, there was no okay. evil. Was so in not? the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. On the end of the day, one end, all the days, he said, and it was good. Yes. There was no sin. Satan, there's something called free will, which you might disagree with, but. <laughs> there's, might not. The Satan, on. yeah. So Satan was the highest of angels. Yes, but okay. he fell. So, well, how did he fall? Did he just like trip and fall or did he choose to step away from God? But is that evil? Hold up. Yes, he separated himself from God. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is Satan, he, you know, he takes the form of a snake and he tempts Adam and Eve. And that is evil. You can't have good without evil. So when God saw that it was good, there was also bad. There couldn't have been just good. Because there's no definition of good without bad. Now, this is man's interpretation. There could there could be great without bad, so you're but I've not me, heard of it. Because you, you're you're. Why you gotta turn? I'm I didn't know that you me, turned it on. You tell me that sin and evil are the same thing, correct? Sin and evil, yes. Now there there could be a hypothetical situation <laughs> yes, where, but in your mind, sin and evil are the same thing. Sure. Yes. Yet. So that means either there was sin beforehand because evil, there was bad. You're saying there's bad, or are you saying bad and evil are separate things? What? I'm just trying to understand your point. Okay, uh, I'm trying or, to understand your point. <laughs> or there was evil for the fall, so therefore there was sin. Because you said, you said Satan tempted Adam and Eve. Oh, okay, okay. Well, here's the thing. Is that evil? Acting is up, hold up. Listen, acting upon a temptation is sin. That is evil. Being tempted is not a sin. Everyone is tempted. I wasn't the, talking about Adam and Eve. You said specifically that what Satan did was evil, correct? No, once they act upon it, it was evil. Him tempting them, well, yeah, I guess it was evil. No, but, not Adam and Eve accident. I'm asking Satan... Okay, the Satan angel. stepping away from God and choosing to tempt Adam and Eve. Yes, that was sin. Okay. Yes. So there was sin before the fall. Before the fall. That's that's just a term. The fall, some people say that's the moment Eve took a bite of the ap apple. Not that. Well, the, the orange, the well, fruit. You would and some people would say that it was when Adam took a bite. It could have been when Eve, I would argue when Eve chose to pick the fruit. It could have been when, um, when Adam lied to God and said... Uh, I was afraid, or it was that woman, or there could be any point where the fall was. But what is when that human? What? No, I'm asking a question. Now that I'm realizing, why does it have to begin with humans? Why does what have to begin with humans? Sin? The fall. The fall. The sin. Because you just mentioned Satan's sin. He separated from God. And, uh, yes, that the. I guess you could say the first sin was when Satan chose to. Maybe not disobey God, but do evil and tempt. Or, for well, all we know, God say... could have sent Satan to tempt them and say, e e you can eat of that tree. Because God had told them, don't eat of that tree. He, maybe he was testing them. Maybe but it was a test and they failed. I might be wrong for my biology. My, my, my <laughs> biology. My Bible. Study. You're still a boy. <laughs> my understanding was Satan fallen. Satan fall fell before Christ, not before Christ, but before, like, before the fall, before Adam, before he tempted Adam and Eve. Or I maybe, would say, I would say, I don't know, but sure, because he, he, here are the options: either he he walked away from God before, during creation, or sometime during that time, and then tempted them, or God told him to tempt, and then he was cursed. 
Because okay. we see after the temptation, he was cursed. So my guess is that that was his first step going away from God was tempting them. Whether God allowed it well, I feel to like happen it or, you know what I mean? Well, he, he knew it was going to happen, whether he told him to do yeah. it or just allowed it. But what not there a verse where he was cast down into earth? How does that make sense if he was on the earth? You can't just cast something down deeper into there. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's in the core. <laughs> I I think the verse you're talking about is when um here can I have your phone so I can pull up Bible verses? Yeah. Well, then I can't think of the verse because I can't pull it up. Um, he's talking about um he sees the uh, yeah. I think that's I want to say that's later on, but it, in the Bible, but it's it's still talking about the fall of Satan, and and when he takes one third of all the angels with him. But that, that that doesn't mess up the timeline. It's just talking about it. You know what I mean? If I... Yeah, but is it, I remember there was a verse keenly. I forgot what it's called about Lucifer falling, like a falling star on the earth. And people were like, that's when. That moment is when it happened. Yeah, that moment is when he pushed. I might be wrong now. I just The remember. verse is familiar, but there's no way to draw a definite conclusion. You know what I mean? Well, I sound like an old man. There's no way to, to make a definite conclusion. But, like, I, I don't see what the big question is. We know at some point he was cast out of... Okay, so here's the thing. No, Whoa, hold up, question. hold up. Wait, wait, hold up. I just realized something. We see in Job, he still has access to the throne room. All right, hey, listen up, listen up. Yeah, I'm looking. He still has access to the throne room in Job. That's after the fall. That's after the temptation. That's after... um. That's after we know that Satan is evil. He still has access to the throne room. Then, sometime later, we see that he is banished from heaven and thrown onto earth. Now, does does he still have access to the throne room? I don't know. I think I don't think he does anymore. Maybe he does. So you're saying it, the fall of might came after the fall of who? Satan? Yeah. Now, do you mean the the literal falling or him being kicked out of heaven? Well, I'm confused. No, I'm just trying to fit all the timeline because we claim that the fall, the fall when the, the first person sinned was Adam and Eve. Correct. But you're saying what if the first sin person was, was Satan? Satan? I I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, that could be. And then, because, like, you made a statement that evil is sin. And, sin and is Satan, evil. sin. Correct. So, the question is, is humans, and their question is, is humans the only beings capable of sin, or can angels sin? I would say no, angels can sin, because we see that angels... Can take sin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just throwing a random question. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, I w well, do you want me to answer that question? <laughs> no, pig okay. can't sin. Correct. They have souls, but not not higher souls. That sounds so. They're not capable. They don't of have good or evil. Correct. Too. Correct. They do they, not. They, all wait. they. What? If a horse <laughs> oh. bit uh, the apple of good and evil, would he oh, realize no. what he's done? Can he sin? Well, did God <laughs> tell him not to? He only told Adam and Eve not yeah, to. Yeah, but anyway, it's the okay. Back it's to the tree bro. of good and the evil. So it it implies that you would see good and evil. You actually do have a point. That'd be really funny. <laughs> and I, I bet there's a worm that went through like the <laughs> and then all the generations of worm just know what's good. The world will be overthrown one day. <laughs> no, um, you you said can angels sin? Yes. Yes, they can, because we see um, some of the angels lusted after the women of the earth, and they came down, and then, now we have Nef Nephilim? Is that what they're called? I have yeah, no Nephilim. idea, but I know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. And, that, and that, that created the sons of Anak with six fingers. The giants. And all death. that stuff. That is sin. That is definitely not normal or okay, and they disregard God. And when they followed Satan, when one third of the angels followed Satan, that was obviously sin. So, yes, angels can sin. So sin is separated from God. So yes, they can sin, I guess. Which is also intriguing me because like we look at hell as this place of fire and burning when it's really just a separation from God, if you think about it. 
Are you saying it's not a real place or? I'm saying it is a real place, but is, we don't really can't put an image on it other than the fact that it separates them from God. So all your good things, so all your pleasure, all your happiness, all your sadness is just going to be gone because those are things that God gives us. Does that make sense? Yes, and <laughs> you're. Let me give you an example. All right. I, I think I know what you're saying. So as I walk further away from God, because God is the provider of joy. He's the provider of pleasure. He's the provider of happiness. So no, as no, no. long term. Yeah, long term. Because Satan can give you a short term pleasure, yes, joy, happiness. But in the end, you feel. It's all, it's all, all about you, all about pleasure. Yes. But in the uh, end, just you, thought feel, I'd clarify that. you feel rotten. You feel. You realize that you'll never fill that void. Yeah, and I believe to some extent, God provides even that sort. Because, like, you think about it, you know what I mean? Not like Satan provides it. God allows it. Yeah, God allows it. He allows so when everything. you go, when you go to hell, or you come more and more, more way Far away from God. Yeah, you start losing. That so you're feeling. saying before you even die, you're in a in a figurative hell. No, I'm saying when you go to hell, you're separated from God. Correct. So therefore, all the good it things. Says, it says in um, Revelation, it is eternal separation, or something like that. So, yes, you are separated from God. Yeah. Hell is separation from God. Now, it's also, you will either be burned to death or you'll be burning alive. There's different takes on that. I don't think God... Whoa. I literally just used up all my high-speed data in this one video. Okay, we're going to have to come back later, folks. Wow, that's terrible. Okay, see ya. Don't use that. Wow. Dude, I literally used up my whole month's worth... Bro, really? Yes. I had it. No.